Well, it's time for our cooking segment. And I'm really, really excited about working with you once again. Mm -hmm. Indigenous Summer Solstice Festival brought us together to celebrate all things culturally inspiring. Inspiring, I should say. Yeah. Inspiring, <laughs> not expiring, because I want to live through this dish because I know what your cooking is like. Tell us about what we're making today. So we are going to be doing a very simple home dinner. Okay. Uh, I'm doing pan-seared Arctic char, mm -hmm. uh, being served with a hollandaise sauce. It's going to be a dill hollandaise sauce. Right. A lot of people are afraid of hollandaise sauce, which is why I chose to do it, because it's actually really easy to do, and it, you can use it on all eggs, benedict, Everything. And every vegetable. Absolutely. And just to show people how easy it is to do. All right. Uh, and how easy it is to recover if we screw it up. Up. Yes. So, because that happens too. And it does. We can Sometimes they separate and yeah. you got to bring them back together. Yeah. So, we're doing the Arctic pan seared Arctic char. We're also going to be doing oven roasted potatoes. Mm -hmm. And we are going to be doing an asparagus. And I chose asparagus because it's spring. Asparagus okay. is fresh, it's a local vegetable. Right. And um, one of the first little beautiful green things to pop out of the ground. Yeah. And it goes really well with fish. And yep. it's one of those things that uh, you serve with holiday sauce. Absolutely. Also. So. All right. So, Let's dive into it. What All do right. we need? So I'm going to just list off the ingredients. Okay. Uh, first for the Arctic char. We'll go through and we'll do the ingredients for the Arctic char and then we'll do it for the other dishes as we get to them. Mm -hmm. So for the Arctic char, all I'm going to be using is a little bit of oil, a little bit of butter, salt and pepper. Okay. And that's going to be it. We're going to pan sear it. Okay. Um, just to, I, I don't like my fish well cooked. No. I know a lot of people like it more well cooked, but I no. like it more of the medium rare. Correct. Uh, this is Arctic char from Nunavut. Mm -hmm. Um, and it is a nice fillet, it's deboned and stuff like that. Um, I have fished for Arctic char when, I, when I've been up there. Um, it's a nice fish, it's, it, it's, it's similar to a salmon, so if people are at home and they don't have Arctic char, they can do the exact same thing with salmon or trout. Perfect. Uh, the hollandaise sauce goes nice with the redfish. And so all I'm going to do is, you know, depending on the size of your pan or what size of portions you want to make, you're just going to cut it to whichever way. With your ulu, of course. With my ulu, which is a traditional Inuit woman's knife. Right. Yeah. So, you know. But now, when you say a woman's knife. Traditionally, Inuit woman's knife. I love ulus. Yeah. So if I'm actually cooking, and I did purchase a couple of ulus, would I be frowned upon by, by using something that's considered a woman's tool? No. 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 Uh, no if, I mean, if because you're not there's use... a great big Alaskans as well. Yeah. They're, and they're different from different regions, different shapes, different sizes, okay. different tech, di used for different things. Okay. We also have small, small ones for sewing and stuff like that. And right. These, these ones will be used for cleaning all the fat off of seals. Well, I use like a that. big Alaskan to cut through the ribs. Yeah. I think it works really, yeah. really well. Yeah. And, and um, you know, it's sometimes when there's ceremonies and stuff like that going on, opening up new buildings and stuff like that, they use an ulu to cut the ribbon. Right. At that point, a man should not do it. Oh. It is a woman who should be cutting really? because it is a woman's knife. It's not. Fair. Gotcha. I mean, that's that's my understanding. Okay. Um, that's cool. Yeah. That's so, cool. I, I just just want to yeah. I want to get it from the source because I don't want to be wrong when I'm talking to somebody. So the best way of actually getting rid of all that is to talk to somebody who's actually impacted by. Well, the there's theory. also a man's knife, right? Right. And the man's knife is a long one, but it would be used for cutting cutting the snow, um, the big snow cubes for making igloos. Ah. So there's a man's knife and there's a traditional Inuit woman's knife. Cool. And um, when, when they're first made, like let's say there's a young boy making his first one or a, like an, an adult male or something like that, he generally would gift it to his grandmother, his mother, or his wife. Oh, that's cool. Or somebody in the community that's that cool. did something for him. So you could have Ulus out there that are literally hundreds of years old. Oh, absolutely. And, and people don't just own one. Wow. Like I own, I can. Pro I probably have seven. Well, it's like a chef with their nothing. knives. Yeah. You don't just have Pretty one much. knife because a lot yeah. of them are purpose built. Yes. Yeah. And this one I got from an elder in uh, uh, oh, Mo Lewis, who I've known for years and years and years. Okay. And he's one of the most well-known Ulu makers. And I also notice there's bone on it as well. This, yeah, this, is, uh, this is caribou antler. And this, it's, cool. it's, it's much darker than... Because it's, That's because you've used it. Well, that and there's uh, iron from seal because oh. I use this ulu to butcher seal. Oh, cool. <laughs> so it changed the whole handle, cool. changed the blade a little bit. Nice. And it's only, ulu is only sharp on one side. Right. Right. So it's not, it's not on both sides and it's uh, cool. on, on like a regular knife. Right. A knife is sharp on both sides. Correct. Right. So I, I don't use an ulu a lot. I use it for certain things, but for mm -hmm. other things I'm, I'm more used to a knife because again, I didn't grow up in the north. You know, left when I was seven years old, so right. I wasn't using this as a lifelong tool. Right. There's people who this exclusively it's use. It's an extension it. of their hand. That's that's all they use. Right. So you're just going to determine, like I would say, this is going to be enough fish for four people here. Okay. Right. You're going to get four to six ounces each. Mm -hmm. So you're just going to, and an ulu is a rocker. 
and um, very sharp. So you cut, and this fish also has a skin on. Sometimes if you're looking, you're going to a store and stuff like that, if you're buying other kinds of fish or Arctic char, uh, you can have it with the skin off. I love the skin. Yep. So if I'm buying fish, I'm buying it with skin on. Correct. I'm actually probably gonna get probably five pieces out of this. Do you wanna try and cut it? Yeah, I'll give it a shot. And um, this one, this char is a little bit frozen. It's much easier to cut through when it's frozen. Um, or, if, I mean, if you have a sharp knife, a knife will go through it anyway. Yeah, so instead of going all, you're, instead of sawing, yeah. yeah. You, want, you want to do this. Yes. So I'm yeah. used to doing this. Yes. I find myself doing the same thing at times. It's very cool. So that's pretty much it. Okay. So these are five points, you know, for a family of four or five. Right. Um, or one very hungry stuff. Or one very hungry. Yep. <laughs> and the nice thing too about fish is if you don't end up using it all at dinner, you can make it into like a everything, a fish spread or something for Absolutely. a sandwich the next day, right? Yep. So I'm not going to put, the, this is my ulu holder, it's a caribou antler, mm -hmm. but my ulu's now got fish, so I'm not going to put it down, but put it to the side. Right. Some people might choose to flour this or not. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to yeah. uh, because I don't want to have, I just don't want it to have a crust. I want it to just be the fish. Okay. So. Now what is going to be your frying medium? Are you using butter or are you using oil? I'm going to do, oh, sorry, I'm talking to you backwards here. That's okay. That. I'm going to start, do it with oil. Okay. With No, no, I'm going to add butter too. Okay. Um, if you just use butter, it's going to burn. Right. So I always... Uh, balance it with a little bit of a oil. A nice little 50-50 mix? Uh, yeah, well, a bit more butter than oil because okay. I love butter. Same here. <laughs> Who doesn't? <laughs> right. And you do want enough that the, the fish is not going to stick to the pan. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to say that's probably about three or four tablespoons, well, maybe yeah. like two tablespoons of oil. Sure. You want it so that it's coating everywhere. It's going to be, you don't want the fish swimming in it, but you also don't want the fish. You definitely want a barrier between the steel and the fish. Yes. Yeah. So I'm going to... A healthy nug of butter? Yeah. And uh, a lot of recipes call for unsalted butter, but then you're putting salt on things. Okay. I always use salted butter, unless it's for baking. That's right. a little more finicky. Right. Um, so I always use salted butter and use less salt for seasoning after if you need to be. You want this to get a little bit... You want the butter to melt. You want the fish to have... Or the, the oil and the butter to have a bit of heat to it. Not burning, but... Would you season the, the, the fish before yes. it goes in the pan? Yeah, a little bit. So a little bit of salt, a little yeah. bit of pepper? And not a long time before, especially with the salt, because if you put salt on too down. soon, it'll break down. It's going to bleed the fish, right? Take right. it all the moisture. Right. And here I'm just adjust, adjusting the size of the... the pepper. grind? Yeah. Because the bigger the grind, the bigger yeah. piece can get stuck in your tooth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, I like pepper, but I don't like crunching on the big peppercorns. Okay. See, I'm the exact opposite. Yeah. After a salad and I find something that I... I find it's a little nasty, and then I crunch on it, and it's a nice big yeah. burst of pepper. Oh. No, not for me. Okay. <laughs> and also means that you can, down low, you're going to get it concentrated. Right. Up high, it's going to spread a little further. Right. And salt is one of those things that's personal taste. And it's always nice to use a, a natural sea salt also. Yes. I noticed that, uh, that we're using a, a natural large coarse sea salt mm -hmm. and grinding it down. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, fresh salt and fresh pepper, always nicer when it's ground yourself. Right. Like instead of buying the iodized stuff that's, or the crushed, so that's already crushed uh, because it's much fresher. So the pan is nice and warm, yeah. the butter's melted. You can see it bubbling. Right. You want it to bubble maybe a bit more. You Get want rid it, of all that, that liquid? Yeah, because the other thing too is um, with the oil, if it's not hot enough, your fish is going to stick to the pan. Correct. So you want it to be hot so that it doesn't yep. stick. And, you know, we can probably get three pieces in here, but then we're kind of overcrowding it. Yeah, we don't So I'm just that. going to do one piece just to show, bring it through. Right. And like I said, we, I, want, I would like my fish to be about medium rare. So I'm going to suggest four to six minutes on each side. Right. It is a bit frozen. Yep. So it's going to not cook really fast. Right. Beautiful. See, so you have that little, you can hear yes. that. So, and I always test with the tip of my fish. Right. And if it doesn't have a sizzle, I wait. So it has a sizzle. Now I'm going to put it nice down. Nice sound. Yeah. Beautiful. Nice little, my bubble, hand. nice little light little bubbling. So yeah, and that's happening. So that's four to six minutes on either side. Right. So while that's happening, we could be moving on and uh, working on what's next, right? Right. So I'm going to actually take, put that rest of this fish just off to the I'll side I'll take here. that for you. Okay. Um, I need a cloth. 
All right, so while the fish is going, I turned on your water for your steam. Okay, super. And uh, what would you like to work on I next? think we're going to do the potatoes next. You're going to do the yeah, potatoes? Yeah, because they're going to take a little bit of time also. All right. So we've got some potatoes here yeah. that I found for you. So these have been microwaved Okay. Uh, about seven minutes about so that. that they're par-cooked. They're par-cooked. Uh, so with the oven roasted potatoes, we're only going to be, we're going to be making them also in a fry pan. Okay. I'm actually called them oven roasted, but they're actually pan roasted. Right. <laughs> well, we can you, do, you can do them either way. Yeah. If you wanted to, you could actually start them off in the pan, finish them in your oven. Yeah. Or for us, we expedited everything by just actually parboiling the potatoes beforehand, and uh, away we go. So yeah. or do we want to season the potatoes before they go in the pan? Uh, no. Or just put them right in? I'm just going to do it like that again. Heat up the so pan. So now you did it. Okay. There you go. All these new... I know, eh? The mar modern, modern marvels. Yeah. I'm used to just putting a piece of wood in the oven and <laughs> heating it up, and that seems to be okay with me, but... So again, oil. The oil is so that the butter doesn't burn. Right. We don't need that anymore. Thank you. Keep an eye on your fish at the same time. I mean, depending on the thickness of the fish, <clears throat> it might cook a little faster. Right. But you can also see on the edges, like, where it's cooking, and that's... Yeah, it's going to need about another two minutes there. So maybe we'll, maybe I put in a bit too much That's oil. okay. No, you, you can't go wrong with butter. It's potatoes. I know, it's butter. It'll soak it all in. Uh, and what are we going to be putting in with the butter? Uh, with the potatoes so well? with the potatoes, well, we're going to get them in. What I'm going to do is we'll put them in there and I'll get you to kind of keep an eye on them. We'll switch mm -hmm. sides okay. and you're going to move them around a bit for me. For sure. And while those are browning, I'm going to make, I'm just going to make like a little uh, herb mixture. We're going to use some dill, some thyme, some cilantro, garlic, salt, pepper, and smoked paprika. Lovely. And we're just going to toss it All on the right. potatoes once they're browned. Let's switch now. You can start on your herbs. And that fish. You mm. want me to flip it? I think, maybe, yeah, you want another fork? No, nope, yeah, Maybe we'll flip it and just see how it's looking. That's still sticking a little bit. We'll just be a little bit gentle with it. There we go. Nice and nice. Okay. Yep. Beautiful. So nice. with your garlic, I'm using fresh garlic. Uh, cut off the end, that brown end, the kind of the root end, I guess. Right. And then you just give cut, it a crush. And the peel comes right off, and you're left just with the garlic bulb itself. Perfect. And so for these, for the potatoes, I'm now just going to, I'm not going to find it, I'm just going to dice them like minced almost. Okay. Because I want to have, I want to taste that little bit of roasted garlic. Uh, with the potatoes. So, just a quick mix. You could mulch them, you can use whole cloves. Right. The more you, the more you break them up, the, the stronger the garlic taste is. I think you're going to have enough residual heat in that pan to finish cooking off the fish. Okay. So we're going to take that So off. that's uh, probably ready for the potatoes. We'll throw some potatoes in. Oh, get a little splatter. So I have the garlic ready. Uh, I have fresh dill here. Um, you could take off a few, just the sprigs. You don't want the thick, heavy stalks. Right. So just a few sprigs, and you're just going to just chop them up a little bit. Dill is, dill to me, it's got, it's just so nice to go with fish. Mm -hmm. So it's, it helps transition from the fish to the, it unifies the dish a little bit. Right. So we're going to have dill on the potatoes. We're not going to have any dill on the fish itself, but we're going to put dill in the hollandaise sauce. Okay. Uh, so then we have, so we have the garlic, we have the dill, we have, uh, this is cilantro. Um, if people, some people don't like cilantro, it tastes like You either salt. hate it or you love it. Yeah. My dad hates it, I love it. Yeah, same here. You know, it's such a big, fresh, beautiful flavor, but as with anything, you're going to have people on either side of the fence. Well, from what I understand, too, is like for some people, it tastes like soap. Soap. Like big time. My dad thinks it tastes like soap. Yeah. And, and it's, it's like, an enzyme. Wow. Yeah. So um, if, you don't, if you don't use cilantro, you can use just any parsley. Right. Right. So again, I'm just, I'm not, and I'm not cutting up really fine mm -hmm. because I want to have those little bursts of flavor in my mouth. Okay. So just like that, chopped up a little bit. And then the other thing I'm having here is thyme. Thyme is... Oh, one of my favorite herbs. Right. And with thyme, you don't cut it. With thyme, you just pick the flower itself. Right. And so you just, you know, rub your hand. Just down like that. 
Now, I actually take the stems as well, and I use them for little skewers for chicken. Oh, yeah. So I'll put three or four of them together, and I'll make a little hole, yeah. just like uh, you do with your, your, your beadwork, with your, your going through the, the actual animal skin. Yeah. I do the same thing to actually create a hole where I can filter that, that lovely piece of woody goodness, because a lot of people just throw that out. Yeah, it's got a lot of flavor. Or, you know, throw it in stock, do something yeah. with it, use it, because, you know, it, it's, it's good stuff. You yeah. know, don't throw things out. Reuse them, repurpose There's them. There's so many things. Like everything that you cook with, well, what we consider a scrap, could be used, like you said, for stocks and Correct. all that sort of stuff. And uh, just got to remember to, la to label your bags before you put them in the freezer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm totally guilty of that. I am too. You know, at the end of the year, you look into your magic freezer <laughs> and it's like, what is this? Yeah. I can't remember. I'm guilty of that too. What protein is it? What vegetable is it? What color is it? What texture is it? Oh, I know. So, like I said, with the thyme, I'm not even going to chop it with a knife because right. I, like I said, it's one of my favorite herbs. And they're tiny little leaves too. Yeah, you and know? you can you can bite through that little stalk that the, the florets sure. are growing on. Yep. And again, I mean, it's it's one of those things. This is what I like to do. Yep. Um, you might not like thyme. You might want to switch it with something else. Any of the herbs, anything works. So it's cooking is what what do you enjoy? What does your family like? Right. Right. <coughs> Sorry, I'm hot. That's I know. Dry. I know. So, so sure. those are. So like, we're just going to finish off the potatoes. Yeah. And what's the last? They have the last thing we're going to be doing is the hollandaise sauce and asparagus. Do you want me to put this closer to you so you can work it closer? Yeah. All right. Uh, we're going to, before we get to the asparagus. It's going to be so quick. Yep. Um. Oh, we need to blanch. No, we. You know what? We can blanch the asparagus, or we. Or can we can just put them right on top here. That's what I was going to say. And let them steam them. Before so why don't you put the herbs on? Why don't you show them how proper yeah. asparagus is? So there we go. Yeah, a lot of people yeah. put their asparagus down and they chop it. Every stalk of asparagus has a natural breaking point. There we go. You just snap it off. This part is woody. Yeah, it, you know it's it's you know snap. Yeah. That is woody and hard. That goes into the stock pot. Yeah. And this delicious, and that's tender, it. fresh. Oh, that's so good. Mm -hmm. So we're going to put these on top of the potatoes before mm -hmm. we add the herbs and stuff, because I don't want all of these herbs that are on potatoes onto yep. this. Um, this we could, I just yeah, turned off the pan, okay, good. and we can just lay them out, and the steam will actually finish off cooking them. Yeah. So we're and, done with that. Yeah, and the nice thing with asparagus, it's, it's not one of those vegetables that is because you need it raw, right? So it's nice that um, it's not going to be, it's going to be like a very nice al dente. Right. Here we are. Uh, we're <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> So the next thing we're going to be working on is the hollandaise sauce for the asparagus. And we're also going to use a hollandaise sauce on the fish. But we're going to use one hollandaise and we're going to make it two ways. Okay. So first we're just going to make it with the eggs and the lemon. Um, and that's what's going to go on the fish. And then, that, no, sorry, the eggs and the lemon is going to go on the hollandaise. Then we're going to add a little bit of fresh dill and that's what's going to go on the fish. So lemon juice. I have this handy dandy little lemon squeezer here. Right. So just to get ready, right, for to have it ready for the hollandaise sauce, the, the flavoring at the end. So all your mise en place is being done right now. Yeah. If you don't have a lemon squeezer, you know what? Just squeeze. You can just squeeze. The other thing I like to do is I just, this, I find this. That's the best because it actually yeah. breaks all of that, that c connective tissue in there yeah. and all those membranes full of pockets of lemony goodness. I use that all the time too. Yeah. Or I like to actually grill it beforehand, that way it... Oh, you have a smoky flavor on it. Smoky, or not just a smoky flavor, but if I'm just simply grilling it, it's actually warming it up, breaking it down, so that when I squeeze it, I get everything yeah, out of it. Yeah, you see some people rolling it and then popping it in the microwave for a moment and that exactly. sort of stuff. So with a hollandaise sauce, you're only using the egg yolks. Okay. And the measurements that I use, uh, I stand fairly standard, two egg yolks, quarter cup of butter. Right. You want your butter melted. Correct. Um, so I think we're going to need to pop this in a microwave. So I'm just going to pop this in the microwave real quick. There, Steph. Okay. Oh. I don't. You're going to start off with a cooler bowl. I put the pan, the bowl on the pot, but I don't want it hot. Right. Because you don't want to cook your egg yolk or scramble it. Right. And um, you know what are you going to do with the with the with the meringue with the whites? Make a meringue. Absolutely. <laughs> Add it to some other scram some other eggs for scrambled eggs at another day. 
And because I'm going to be doing, um, because I'm making enough hollandaise sauce for the fish itself and the, the asparagus, I'm not going to just do two egg yolks. I'm going to double it. Right. Because normally two would probably be enough. Uh-huh. I should have, I needed one more bowl to put the egg yolk in. Here we go. Or the egg. There we go. This is not quite big enough. So yeah, I'm going to, I'm doubling this one. So it would be four eggs and maybe a half a cup of butter, but. And, you know, as easy as hollandaise is, I still get nervous every time I make it. Right. It's, it is just one of those things that, uh, you know, it might break. But mm. I'm not as nervous as I used to be because I know how to recover it. So you just want to whisk up your yolks a bit. A whisk would be, if you have a whisk, it's great. If not... Let's see if I can find you a whisk. Whisk, 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 whisk. Yeah, this is a... I mean, the, the fork is fine. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm good. So we're doing a double boiler here. Just a little bit of water in the bottom of the pot. Okay. Uh, we don't want it to be really heavy because the steam is going to be enough to make this hollandaise sauce. Okay. And actually, yeah, uh, you know what? I a whisk. We're going Let me to find you a whisk. Just because when we're adding the butter, we want yep. to have that aeration. And I'm going to grab the butter out of the microwave. Ready to go. So a lot of people and a lot of chefs, depending on how fine your cuisine is going to be and stuff like that, they use clarified butter. Why well, I would I love butter too much. I'm not taking all that stuff out of the butter. No. <laughs> and we're at home, right? These are homemade meals. So just make sure your egg yolks are. So again, not a lot of steam. I need to do this. So four eggs, about a half a cup of butter. That looks pretty good. Sure. And you're just going to slowly drizzle in your egg, or sorry, your butter into the egg. Yeah, that's the other thing too. Sometimes you need four hands and like, be good. Oh, good. It would be good to be that's an octopus. That's why you have friends in your kitchen. Yeah, or have an octopus. Can we turn it towards me? <laughs> Short little bees, like. <laughs> so and this and just slowly drizzle slowly in. Slowly emulsify the butter into yeah. the fat, or the butter into the eggs. And it's going to be almost like a lemon custard when you're done. Mm. Except it's it won't going, taste like lemon it's going custard. to be butter. Yeah. Butter and egg yolk. Oh, I don't know. Lemon custard. You know me and lemons. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, it's really, really good. I can do a lot more with a, with a hollandaise sauce than I can do with a lemon custard. <laughs> so. So you just basically want to keep whisking until yeah. it actually increases in volume. Yeah. And drops in color to a little paler color. Yeah. A and little uh, thicker. Becomes thick. Because cool. it is going to get a bit thicker because your egg yolks are cooking. You know what I'm going to do? Mm. I'm going to keep whisking that for you. I'm going to do the potatoes. And you can actually do the potatoes. Yep. And maybe start plating everything up. I'm going to actually, the asparagus itself is going to come right out. Yep. Because the asparagus is ready. It's ready. It's cooked. And for all the cooking that I do, Steph, I'm going to, like, we're at... George Laurier was nice enough to give us the use of his kitchen yes. at Sebong Cooking School. Yep. One day, I'm, or one week, I am going to come here with George Laurier and learn some plating. <laughs> 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 because I, I do, my, my cooking is home cooking, a lot of it. I cook out for events and things like that. Right. Um, but I'm always awed how beautiful chefs make their plates look. I can make it look okay. It's all separate and stuff, but I don't have all that fancy stuff. There you go. <laughs> but you know what? At the end of the day, it's exactly... It tastes the same. It tastes great. And it, my plate looks good. It looks clean. Yep. But it's not as pretty as some plates that I see. I hear you. But that's why I want to come back here for George. So your potatoes... Yeah, so my potatoes, I'm putting them... like So let's just pretend they were on the heat the whole time and this was all happening, but now they're ready. So now I want to finish them, right? I'm going to actually take this out too because this fish is ready. Yep. I'm a skin lover. Me too. So I'm actually going to put the skin down. Like it's been sitting up like this. It's fairly crispy on the edges, mm -hmm. but I'm going to put it down because okay. I want to see the hollandaise sauce on that part of the fish. Okay. And with it down too, the hollandaise sauce is not really Nice golden color on the fish as well. Beautiful fish. That's really pretty. And it does feel pretty nice. 
So now I'm just going to finish off my potatoes. So with the cilantro, the, the dill, we're going to use a little bit on the potatoes. We're going to use a little bit also in the hollandaise sauce after we put some of the hollandaise on the asparagus. So we're just going to heat the, bring this to a really quick heat. We don't want it really hot. I'm going to add... Oh, all of it. You think? Oh, yeah. Garlic. I don't have to kiss you tonight. Oh, yeah. I'm Italian. We love <laughs> garlic. <laughs> Uh, did you put lemon by chance in the holiday sauce? No, I did sauce? not. Okay. So the Would last, you like that in now? Yeah, so the last little bit of thing, and this is just to add flavor. Right. Uh, you can use lemon, you can, and you don't, again, it's how much, how much flavor do you want? Good. Right? Yep. So I would start off with maybe a half a teaspoon, and you can increase it. Uh, it's better to put in too little to start with and add it than it is to put in too much and you can't take it out. It needs more lemon. And actually, too, a bit of salt if you could. I'm going to put it all in. So I Good. like lemon. And you wanted what? Just a, Yeah, a little bit of salt, for sure. And again, it's what you like. Mm -hmm. I don't want a lot of pepper because I've already got pepper on other things. And if you're uh, worried about the little black flecks, use white pepper. Yeah. You know, I don't mind seeing little black flecks you know, back when I went to George Brown a gazillion years ago, if you made one of these sauces with black pepper, you may as well go home, because that's kind of frowned upon. Yeah, and I don't even have black, white pepper. I like the flavor of black. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's very nice. Mm -hmm. Just that little bit of lemon. Yummy. Yeah, so essentially you're warming up your potatoes, you're uh, essentially throwing in a little garlic. Yeah. You're going to warm the garlic up or you're going to yeah, burn it? Yeah, I, I don't want the garlic to end up being burnt. I want it just to be warmed a little bit. The same okay. with all the herbs. Uh, I don't want all the herbs to go into the pan and sit there and then and then burn. brown. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I just want the heat just to break the essence a little bit. Perfect. And if you want your garlic to be browned a bit, that's great. So be it. For me, it's it's a lot of the cooking is what... what what does the individual like? Right. What does their family like, right? right? Maybe they don't like garlic. For sure. So we're also going to do a little bit of salt and pepper on this. And potatoes can take a fair amount of salt. Oh, sorry. I'm not used to having somebody I know, to make. I know. <laughs> I know. Trust me. It's, it's when you have somebody in the kitchen that, you know, has experienced hands, it's, it's, a, it's a pleasure, but it's, it's also it's, it's just so, unnatural. Yeah, like <laughs> you know, what are you doing? Get out of my kitchen, you know? So I'm going to say that's enough. The garlic sure. is heated. Uh, I'm going to do the thyme first. Thyme is a little bit of a, of a so, heavier herb. So what do you So want? it can take a little bit more time with the heat. For sure. And I'm only going to use, I love thyme. So mm -hmm. thyme is so good with the other things thyme, like meat. Garlic. Yeah. Can't go wrong. A little bit of dill. That popping sounds great, eh? Yeah. I love it when a, when a, when a pan talks to you. Yeah. That's when I get excited. You know, it's like, how, how do you know when to do what? How do you know when to do what? Listen to the pan. Yeah. The pan's going to tell you what to do. So the dill I added on, yep. and again, the reason I'm putting dill on here is I, I, I like dill myself. I should have had a glass of water. <coughs> Bless you. Um, but the other thing too is like you're tying the dill from the potatoes into the dill hollandaise that's going to happen shortly. Right. So cilantro, we can turn this off now. Sure. Do this. Sure. We do that, of course. All good. Yeah. So I'm just going to add, I love the freshness of cilantro. Me too. So I'm just going to add that. I don't really want that to get any heat on it. So, and then that's it. And you just kind of pour them onto your plate. See, Steph is being helpful. I'm not used to it. <laughs> Look at that. That's gorgeous. We'll put this down here. Right there. So now we're going to put, I'll get you a spoon. We're going to put some of the hollandaise, that, of that hollandaise itself, just on the asparagus. And then we're going to add a little bit of dill to it. To now do that. And that dill we're going to add onto the fish. And I can eat this like soup. Me too. <laughs> mm. So I want to make sure that I get enough mm. so that every mouthful of fit char off the mm. Arctic char that I'm having, I'm going to have a good dollop of that looks sauce. tasty. And this is smoked paprika, and it's just pretty. And it can go on everything. That looks awesome, Trudy. What a fun segment. It is. That was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. I love cooking with you. 
I love sharing the kitchen with you, and I love learning from you. I think we need to taste it. Seth. Oh, I think because we, it looks good. We definitely need to taste it. <laughs> but but I'm pretty sure we're going to be tasting this after uh, the cameraman shows some oh, some really? beauty shots. You got to remember, right. it's TV. I keep forgetting. The guy in the background <laughs> saying he's on, he's he's talking to me now, going, "Don't touch the dish." See, I'm not I used to this. I need some beauty shots. I'm not used to this. So we'll definitely. Can we can we have a potato? No, we can't touch anything. Have a potato. All right. I'm going to oh. have a potato. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Hot, but mm. man, mm. I love that dill. Yeah, it pops. Mm -hmm. Judy, it was fun. Mm -hmm. Once again, you knocked it out of the park. Really happy to be part of this. And uh, you guys can do this too. Yeah. And the, the nice thing about this is that took us, what, maybe a half hour? Uh, and that, that's with us doing a whole bunch of stuff. Well, but, e but even like if we started from the beginning, it's a dish. Easily. You can be. You can cook a dinner at home for your family, half hour to forty-five Easily. minutes, and you've. And got it's a phenomenal dish. Healthy. Yeah. Whole We're foods. We're not talking chicken fingers here in French nope. fries. And organic. Got a girl. Thanks, Chef. Thank you. Take care, everybody.